Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. Let's get started with a quick solar update here. Our solar wind speed's coming in at 446.5 kilometers per second with a density of 4.2. Guess what? Two days in a row, spotless again. That's 55 days now this year without sunspots. And you draw that in comparison to the last time we were coming out of a minimum which was the 2010 they had 51 spotless days now I've always said this from the beginning of this year it'll be telling to see how many spotless days we have this year compared to where we were this time in the last solar cycle um, they don't always all start right on time so it's not completely fair to say well the majority of the sunspotless days are proof complete proof but it is a signal, it is an indication where we are when you go back dating things in time, where we were this time, we're definitely more spotless days than we were in this point of the beginning of solar cycle 24. So just interesting stuff to compare here. We'll continue to watch this because we'll go to the grandsolarminimum.com. In fact, uh, quickly, just wanna point out, even though you see bright regions on our star right now, Earth facing, those are not sunspots. They are not qualified as sunspots. They do not possess the dark cores. To become a sunspot is just an active bright region here. Same with the one in the southern part of our star here. It is about to become Earth facing, not a sunspot. Uh, cosmic radiation is up today, 8.7%. That's up 0.6% over the last 48 hours. It's interesting to me to see how we are dealing with the spotless sun uh, multiple days in a row. Now this is the third uh, set of multiple days without sp sunspots in the last two weeks. Uh, now KP indices are falling back in the low part, which is typical of solar minimum. Uh, what is going on here, right? We are supposed to be upticking towards a solar max. This is why I made the statement uh, a couple shows ago about but the prediction that um, we are showing 10% more sunspot activity than we were, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago at this point in the news cycle. And just two weeks later, we went from possibly talking about, you know, high output of sunspots in 25 to now it's acting quiet. And what's even more concerning is when you look at uh, some of these stats here. Right now, we're flatlining in solar flare activity. Nothing. Not a thing. Not since uh, the B flare that we had after the C1. Uh, solar proton flux, flatline. KP indices, we're up at a 3. They've dropped now to a 1. They're fighting back and forth between 3 and 1, but lately they have been staying on the lower side between 2 and 3. Let's look at the big picture because this is what's important as far as sunspot forecasting goes. Um, you always have to take account for the the occasional let's develop out of nowhere sunspot. Those do happen quite a bit. Uh, this is the region that was a sunspot. It lived for one day. It is no longer pos uh, positioned as a sunspot. This is right on the eastern limb. Uh, spaceweather.com has not circled this as an area of interest. So when you look at our sun right now, your question has to be, where is the next sunspot? Could it be this? Could this be the very beginning of the next sunspot? Possible, very possible. Uh, that has breached the eastern limb as well, and that has not been circled either. So unless we're in a very early developing stages, we have two potentials for new sunspots, but I, the likelihood of those, and, and just my opinion here, uh, forecasting this, I would say that there's a low chance of these becoming sunspots. So it is possible to see another string of spotless days, three or four before maybe we get some spontaneous activity from this region or this region here. This one is just now breaking the Easter limb. So what's behind it? And you could see because the lack of communication with stereo B, we don't have a lot of information on the far side. But looking at the edge of this far side, you'd have to say that things look pretty quiet. We don't see anything that would indicate any bright patches along this edge usually you can see the next big sunspot coming around the corner right now all is well so question remains how many more spotless days are we going to see in 2021 
Again, July was very, very busy, very active, and it seemed like that Solar Cycle 25 was well on its way. We haven't seen a lull like this from our sun since, I think, spring. So very interesting to, yeah, it was definitely uh, spring because we had a stretch of 80 days in a row with sunspots before we finally broke that streak a couple of weeks ago. So this is kind of um, a little, maybe a last minute uh, stab at solar minimum before we finally get into the beef of solar cycle 25 and start that uptick for real. Maybe this was just the appetizer all the way through July. Uh, but right now, the sun is quiet. All right, let's take a look at some quick forecast of the weather here in the United States. Take a look at our weather map here. Severe weather again possible for Michigan and southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois. Uh, just rain showers, spotty showers across the Midwest into the northeast. Possible heavy downpours at times. Northwest is being invaded by all kinds of high pressure, which is causing the air to be dry. And unfortunately, no rain for them. They need it. All the forest fires will continue to burn or will burn today. Uh, no thanks to Mother Nature and her rain. The southwest, though, could see some showers again. These areas where it's just the green and white polka dots, uh, this is just a chance for a pop-up shower. This is not guaranteed rain, but the chance is there. All right, we'll take a look at tomorrow, Thursday, August 12th. Again, chances for showers for the majority of the United States, except for Central Texas and Oklahoma. Most of the northern plains and the northwest looking good. More high pressure setting in. Temperatures should be comfortable. We're about to heat up here across the states, folks. We're getting ready to see some summer action. Last hoorah, I believe, here over the next two weeks. And then by Friday, Friday the 13th, a pop-up chance of rain for most of us across the United States. Northwest is dry. Another cold front pushing through, which is going to squeeze some heating possibly once again to the east coast and northeast by early next week. Right now, we are looking at some pretty... Uh, warm temperatures across the United States. Now, the yellows indicate uh, near 90. That's correct, folks. We're seeing 90 degrees up in Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont, North Country of New York, uh, even shades of near triple digits and parts of the Mid-Atlanta region in Virginia, New Jersey, D.C. area, Maryland. Watch out. It could get pretty darn hot today as that lighter orange shade represents the upper 90s possibly breaking into that triple digits we know we're going to see that extreme heat across the west today please if you work outside use caution uh, if, if you don't have to work in this kind of heat don't uh, especially if you live in central california and in the southwest near arizona utah or nevada borderline as well parts across kansas oklahoma texas going to be hot and very hot and humid across most of the United States, too. Up in the Northeast, I know where I'm at. We are under a heat advisory today. And tomorrow, tomorrow we will eclipse 90 degrees. And we are under excessive heat uh, warning as temperatures are going to be near 105 on the heat indices. The only good news, there isn't no good news, really, if you live in the Northeast. It's going to be uncomfortable at night in the 70s for a low for half the country. But if you look back into the Northwest... Well, temperatures could be in the 30s and 40s, but daytime highs will rock it back up into the 80s. So this is part of that grand solar minimum swing, the temperature swing that we've talked about and on previous shows, except what's happening right now is on a such smaller scale. What we're going to see as this GSM really cranks up towards the end of the 2020s. So folks, thank you for joining us today on our midday report on solar and weather. We hope everyone has a great day until the next Grand Solar Minimum Report. Everyone take care. We will talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform, buy a t-shirt, or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.